All right, we are live. And I have with me Brian. Hey, Claire. And Claire, I believe, is from New Zealand. Hi. And Frantishik. And Holly. And Jesse. Hello. And Mark. And Mikey. Hello. And Sean. Hey, everybody. How many uh, time for your uh, for your event today? You want? I don't know about an hour or maybe less. I don't know. Okay. But I will not hurry. I will be slow. <laughs> so thank you all who donated. Thank you all those two people who donated yesterday. It was much pleasure and gives me much inspiration. Um, I offer private sessions. Um, you can find me on humancolony.org and you can find the whole community on humancolony.org. Also look for, uh, for our uh, Hucola, H-U-C-O-L-O community on Google+. I'm posting the invites there. I forgot to post it today, but usually I post it there. And um, if you want to receive uh, participation links by email, uh, send an email to me by uh, at max at humancolony.org. And also send your PayPal donations to me if you like uh, to max at humancolony.org. That's great help. Uh, All right, I will better go. I want to bring today um, Vano, Vano of Chakani. I don't know what will happen. I never channeled them. I don't even know the sex, uh, the gender, but um, I want to try. Let's see, maybe, maybe it will be a mixture of everything. We'll see. Yeah, I will have to warn you, it's still lots of me and very little of them. The personality comes through and between the sessions, I feel very much affected by the energies, one way or another. So the energy is absolutely real. The information that comes through, uh, it looks to me more like my uh, imagination than than anything else. But sometimes I hit hit the right point, so that's very inspirational. And um, yeah, and sometimes I like what what comes out. Thank you. All right. Oh, I need to give you controls. Yeah, I will give controls to people. So if you need to mute someone, you would be able to do that. So I'm sharing controls. All right. Anybody? How is everybody? Before I go, do you have anything to announce or to say or to ask? I just want to say much love to everyone. Oh, much love to everyone. I want to be slow today. Yes. Anything else? Oh, I don't know even how Vano would look like, would feel like. Let's see what happens. The name sort of came, but uh, that's also what I have so far. Mm. Where are you? Wanna be close to you. Go for that sign in. Ooh, let me turn off the sound. Let me turn off. I have all kinds of sounds going. Hello. Hello, everybody. I would be Vano. I'm still largely Max and partly Roho, but uh, I'm trying to come through here. Yes. 
I will uh, allow. I will announce first a little summary to give, to tune up, to give certain vibration, and then we'll do a little discussion. Our intent is not to hurry. I want to speak about, I want to start about physicality. <sighs> While flying high in higher dimensions, higher spheres, don't forget to go physical. Go physical. That is a part of your experience. It's a part of your mission here. And being physical will help you to be spiritual as well. Going physical is very easy. Feel yourself. Feel what you do. Keep your focus of attention in yourself. Keep your focus of attention in your physical sensations. While doing simple things, eating, washing, washing dishes, dressing up, undressing up, meditating, feel your body, feel your sensations, feel the space around you, while your imagination, your dreams carry you away, keep your feet on the ground, stay physically grounded, sense the ground underneath. That's one part of staying balanced and allowing the energies express fully. Another part is staying pure and purifying yourself. When you are pure, things become easy. You have your movie, Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump. Why he was so successful? Why he was so strong? Because he was pure. He was trusting and pure. And this trusting and Pure purity will give you protection and will give you power, will open you up to other people and let them see that you're pure and trusting so they can trust you. And when they trust you, good things will come your way. Why Jim is so attractive to people because he is pure and trusting. Tell Jim anything, he will believe you. And that's why people trust him. When you trust others, others mirror that to you. Yes, there are conspiracies. Yes, there are theories. Yes, there is a lot of mischief and distortion. Keep it on your periphery. You don't have to become stupid, but keep it on your periphery. Remain as a whole, remain pure. Push away something, push away everything that doesn't match your inner core frequency. And when you're pure, the energy will flow better through you. People ask, 
how to stay focused. Because many of you, some of you, some of you, fell out of the mainstream. Some of you never came into the mainstream, but some of you fell out of the mainstream. And now, no matter what they try, they cannot get back in the flow. And they try this, and they try that. And it sometimes and often feels like failure. You try this and you fail. You try this and you fail. And the balance is not there, so you cannot really obtain those experiences other obtain. Other people can do things, can afford things which give them experiences. Maybe they are not that enlightened, but they do obtain those experiences. And you are locked in your tiny shell and you cannot come out because you don't, cannot afford many things. You cannot afford travel. You can't afford uh, other paid events, even light workers' events. So, how to solve this is not easy, and it is easy. I will give you just one outlook. Many people on mainstream, they achieve their abundance, achieve their material success through a couple of things. First, they accumulate material mm, goods, material goods. And second, they are afraid. Their fear helps them to be employed their fear and lots of their restrictions make them brainwashed so they fit really well into the system like a piece into the puzzle. They fit into the mainstream system. You are not afraid and then when you meet, when you are interviewed, when you meet these mainstream people, they see that you are not afraid and they understand that you wouldn't work because you are not as brainwashed, not as limited. Hmm. So, one of the ways is to get this experience and with your inner knowledge, with your inner core, with your faith, with your knowledge of spirituality, you still can get back into the system and shine. It, it is just a skill. You can become a professional. You will not be afraid, but you will fit in the system because you understand and because you energize, because you have this inner energy and you can shine. And instead of accumulating the goods, accumulating the material things, you could accumulate the connections you can reach to people and you can build a social abundance, social richness. You can link to people or fly to work at enlightened type and all other people because with your love, with your understanding, with your kindness, you can reach to people, you can resonate with them, understand them, and help them with your love. So that could be one of the ways to get the abundance and to integrate in the society. And the final goal is to raise the society to a new level. So you have to, at some point, integrate and raise, integrate, link, and raise. Hmm. Another thing is, when you are unemployed, many of you feel down and the energies don't flow through you. Sometimes you rise and then you are pushed down by lack of energies because you stepped out of the flow and you don't get back. How can you come back to the flow? By purifying, 
by shining, by believing in yourself, by loving yourself, by understanding that you are worth it. Others in mainstream, they have to judge this themselves through their financial success. They have stuff and that's why they feel good. They have job and that's why they feel good. And you don't have, many of you don't have a job, many of you don't have money. So how can you feel good? Just by leap of faith, by understanding. When you understand the nature of reality, you can step on this stepping stones of understanding and raise yourself up again and be as happy, as abundant, as energetic as the others. It takes the purity, it takes the leap of faith, and also it takes returning to physicality. Yes, that was one of the main messages I wanted to print today. Just step on your faith, as a stepping stone and raise yourself up. And when you become happy and whole and energetic, things will come to you and you'll be again you'll be again in the flow and you'll be in the flow in a new way. Things will flow through you. You will be successful. You will be helpful to others. And of course networking, linking to others, especially to the ones of your kind, is essential. All right, and then, and now, thank you for listening. Now I bring up uh, the discussion. Please share and ask questions and chat with me if you like. My name is Vano, and I have some of the Max energies and some of the Rojo's energies, and now the Chakani energies are coming through a little bit. Hopefully they will express more as we go. Hey, I just want to say much love. This is much Sean. Love. I'm just sending me you my love. Thank you, Sean. What's new in your life? More realizations. You asked last time when you spoke to Max and Rohan about being happy, remind me, being happy without, without falling your excitement, yes, yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I see. And I just wanted to add, this question seems to be important for you because you have to choose between your highest excitement and mediocre excitement and not so much excitement. So there are many paths open in front of you. And some of them seem more practical and some of them seem like impractical, right? Yes, yes. Yes. May I say so, something? Yes, please go ahead. Hello, uh, my name is Mikey. How are you this evening? Hi, Mikey. Thank you for joining the conversation. It's my pleasure. Thank you for the wise words. Um, they resonated with me uh, very much in this time that we are all in. Um, one thing that I find a little difficult for me personally and maybe other people can relate is that I'm very empathic um, to all polarities it's hard to stand my ground sometimes as I wave like the wind towards everyone's energies and if someone is sad or glad or angry I will be empathic to each soul level and try to make my day around that and try to converse with these people while staying 
in a um, in their moods without staying in my own sovereign space, sovereign ground. Is there anything you can help me with that? Yes, a little bit. Thank you. There was, there is a short story by Ray Bradbury. I believe it's called The Martian. There was a Martian there who was absolutely empathic, like thousand percent empathic. And when that Martian met humans one by one, he would match their best desire. If humans wanted, there was a pair of humans who lost their child. So the Martian was so empathic, he became their child. And then there was another human who had another need, so the Martian was empathic to that, and it transformed to another thing. And that's exactly what an image of what happens to you. You match and synchronize the vibration of others by your empathy. And you have to transform every time. What happened in this story, when this Martian ended up in a city, it melted down because there were so many vibrations. Uh, he transformed so fast that he had to basically just he destroyed himself by matching so many vibrations. So yes, the balance is the key, and the <clears throat> rigidness, solidity, structure is the key. It's not that you don't have structure. Everyone has a structure. It is just that your hmm, flexibility is higher. Your desire to satisfy others, to match others, to resonate with others is higher than in many others. But you do have structure as well. There are solid things like platonic solids, DNA, chakra structure, bone structure, your pains of the past, your lessons of the past. Build your structure based on those structural elements and make it an art, make it a conscious effort allow yourself to bend only as much as it is healthy for you and as it serves the purpose. The key could be the purpose. Choose the purpose as the key. You want to help. You want to serve others. You cannot serve others if you melt down and destroy yourself. Right? Quite so. Yes. So optimize. There is a balance. Asian arts are Asian martial arts and energy healing arts are centered on the idea of balance and play and improvisation. That's funny you say that because I teach jiu-jitsu and I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu and that helps me that that helps me a lot. <laughs> Here you go. Yes, and that brings me to the idea which I also wanted to bring up. Do your everyday work, everyday conversations, everyday thoughts, every second, every moment with the idea of higher service, as if it was a sacral ritual. Do everything as a sacral ritual. Intent everything you do as a sacral ritual. That will bring lots of energy and lots of support. Think of nobility. Think of sacredness. 
and whatever you do while reaching to other people, it will enlighten, it will put light in what you do, it put, will put love, nobility, sacredness in what you do. Of course, when you speak to mainstream people, materialistic people, religious people trapped in their traps of religion, you have to match their language and way of thinking. But still, think of service, think of sacred service, sacred intent, noble intent, purity and high vibration. Think of high vibration as purity, nobility and sacredness. And that will bring higher energies right in what you do. Thank you. That was beautiful. I try to treat everyone equally. And uh, sometimes they don't treat me that way in reciprocation, but I do it anyway. And that's where sometimes perhaps my um, energies um, get taken away from me or get swayed into different people. Ah. But if I thank you for your words. If you do it properly, if you do it in a balanced way, you wouldn't even notice that they did it, they respond, didn't reciprocate. You would say, of course, no problem. Yes, hmm. it's expected they forgive you anyway. Yeah. All right. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Much love. It doesn't mean that you have to become impractical. Just. Of course. Calibrate your expectations and forgive them in advance, and you will be surprised how good they are. You still can be on the periphery, you can be suspicious of the motives and behaviors. You have to really double check. But if you put good intention, if you put good energy, love, the sense of service, sacred service, it will help you to go through this. And challenges, yes. Thank Coming you so back much. To, yes, thank you. Coming back to Sean's <laughs> idea of choosing the path. It doesn't have to be a single choice at the moment. You are still scanning, screening different paths. It doesn't have to be super impractical because it is very high excitement. But if it is impractical, multiply your highest dream by highest impracticality and you end up with some average output because it's all probabilities, all intentions. You intend well, but you don't really believe in this reality it is real. So think about something which you can imagine is real and it still feels quite exciting and make several steps in this direction and as you make these steps in this direction you will see more because you will come to the new perspective and from that perspective make a next decision as you feel the energy flows into you the world is coming to you there is a flow then more tools come to your way. You assemble the tools, you collect the tools, you build your instrumentation, which doesn't have to be material. It can be people, ideas, understandings, energies, connections to different level of energies. And you keep exploring, keep expanding. That's my suggestion. Of course, there are many approaches, but that would be quite logical, I would say. Yes. Any more sharings and questions? Hello, Max. Yes. Yes. Um, hello. I was just, I was actually really curious about what you were kind of saying about staying in the body and being physical. Um, it's really interesting kind of 
piggybacking on what the last Mike was talking about, how when you're highly empathic, you pick up the highs of the highs. So when you're really happy or when people are sending positive energy to you, you can really feel it. But, you know, the downside is that when fear vibrations or anger vibrations are occurring, you also internalize it and feel very kind of sick. So I was just curious um, how kind of to modify his question a little bit, how you see maybe practicing meditation or what advice you have as far as staying in the body um, when you're feeling unsafe, because I think that's a big part of my journey is learning how to not leave the body when I feel stressed out or stressed or uh, under attack and how to stay in that place while it's happening. So thank you. Like yes, I understand. Yes. The energies come up and down. It is here by design. The planets, your astrological ideas are still in in uh, in force. Uh, things go up and down, and it could be general. It could be in your personal development and could be your biological cycles, health cycles, spiritual cycles, uh, unexpected explosions of negativity in the sotsum in the society. Yes. Um, and that basically is their main level of understanding. When your mood is down, it really helps to analyze and realize whether it is, usually it is few things. One, it is something completely unrelated to you, just empathic pollution. You are polluted with the flow of negative energies. Another one is a fear which is your personal fear, maybe you're facing a fear of something in the future. So separating those two really helps. And sometimes it is a, a real premonition, maybe there is something coming. It also helps. Now, what do you do with this? If it is something outside, something from outside, it usually has a signature of outside negativity. You, as you sense, is it something from outside? Is it something from outside? Am I picking on someone negative nearby? Or am I picking on something political or the war or a natural disaster? Am I picking on that? you would be able to sense that. You need some sort of intuition, but it, it's relatively easy to separate that. Now, if you're facing your own fear, something is coming and you don't know what to do with it. You have to deal with it one way or another. It's another big story how you deal with future uncertainties which are coming to you again by design. Of course, there is also depression which comes from the past. It is the pain of the past that follows you. So that is something that you need to let go in a constructive way. Letting go of the pain but not letting go of the lesson is the key here. All right. So yes, in any way, if it is something biological, if it is something connected to nature, something independent of you, which you cannot fix, basically you have to live with it, you have to accept it, and just know that it is temporary. You, you will either die or survive and come back. It will not last forever. And usually it, 
you survive. And hold on to something. Hold on to something positive. Do not to let it, this negativity drag you down. Hold on to your past experience, on to your pain, on to the stepping stones, on to vortexes of energy which allow you to sustain yourself on a reasonably high level, not to drag you down. Stay afloat. And of course, there are your friends, virtual and people locally nearby, animals, children, older people, material things, nature. Step out to nature and usually if it's not freezing you can survive there and hold on to nature and allow yourself to purify of this negativity. Sometimes it takes minutes, sometimes it takes days, sometimes it takes weeks, sometimes it takes months but usually you come back and keep the understanding of the purpose and the purpose is something which is which is of your choosing you have to choose the purpose that purpose allow you to raise back it's like you're drowning but by choosing the purpose you hang on to something that allows you which pulls you up and we offer you the idea of ascension as a major purpose and the idea of personal ascension as a major purpose. Thank you so much, uh, Max. That really <laughs> helps. I, I think kind of what you're saying is catching yourself in the moment and being present and also to really not isolate yourself because I've noticed that something that's common, you know, throughout so many people in the human colonies is that either because of access to resources or uh, their own issues, they kind of isolate themselves, which often seems to kind of only exacerbate the situation instead of going to nature or to environments with other people that are of a like mind to try and integrate. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. One thing which I wanted to comment here would be if you have, if you live with loved ones and you are depressed, when you are depressed, see maybe they can tolerate only that much of your depression. So isolating yourself and carrying it by yourself might help them to stay afloat. If you share too much of negativity with them, they, it might drag them down. So see how much they can handle. And then isolation is actually helping. Sometimes the depression is just a necessary step of compression. You compress before the next expansion. So that is OK to be isolated at that moment, if it feels right. But then you have to go through that, sometimes speed through that, speed through this dive and come out. As the airplane coming down and accumulates, converting its potential energy and kinetic energy, and then using this kinetic energy speeds up and gets out of the dive with even, to even higher level. So sometimes this depression and this depression can be helped by isolating yourself, purifying yourself, dropping the baggage because that is the time when you cannot carry the baggage. You drop everything which is not you. You are left alone with your inner core frequency. And then as you drop the baggage, you can come out with more purity. And then you take on what you can carry, what resonates, and leave the rest 
and leave the rest. Hello, we can talk about more happy topics if you like. Anyone? Anyone. Yes, welcome. This is Timatu. Hi, Timatu. Who am I speaking with? This is Max with a mixture of Faraho and Vano. Vano is a new energy coming from Chakani, the Bashar's well, people. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Um, I just want to say, Roho, thank you for all your help. You've, you've been very helpful uh, with my back pain. And I uh, wanted to say, is there anything that I can do or work on that would uh, help with, I'd say, astral projection? Oh, astral projection. What is the purpose? Let's start from the purpose. Go, go see my family. Oh, your astral family? Your star people family? Yes, star family. Ah. Hmm. What's the problem? Why, uh, why do you need help? Well, I'm wondering if I'm uh, even doing it at all because ah. I'm having issues remembering. Ah. Hmm. I would invite help from the audience. You have a good experience with astral projection. Anybody who could suggest anything? If anybody could suggest the tips for Matt. Hey Matt, uh, this is uh, Jesse. I, I guess for me, what I really find most helpful as far as astral projection is setting the intention. I mean, it's been really fascinating to me kind of working with Arcturian energies because it seems like their race puts a lot of focus and uh, intention on intentions, I guess no, no pun intended. And so before I do astral work or astral... <clears throat> travel, I intend to, that no matter um, how short or how long it would be, that the main focus is that I want to be able to recall um, the majority or the, the, the bulk of what I experience. And it's kind of fascinating, you know, because the astral projection to me is a state of extreme expansion. So it's like you are exiting your body and you have you're operating on a huge operating system it's like when you come back into the body you're you're trying to fit like fit into this like old computer <laughs> so it's like it's this I've always kind of thought of channeling like that sometimes or even natural projection like that like you have all this bulk of data outside and then you're trying to use like a computer from the 80s to try and decipher it, so a lot of it gets lost in translation. So before I astral project, I just, um, I ask my guides and I ask my higher self to put an emphasis on the intention of remembering what is most uh, resonant for my highest good. So uh, hopefully that helps a little bit. <laughs> I think that's great. I've been having a crystal in my hand and uh, that's been helpful too, but I just, I think that's great. Thank you. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, because I know, I know that I've had times when I've astral projected and it's kind of like you, that dream state where you are, it's like it's crystal clear, but it's right there, but then it just kind of melts away. But I've noticed that even for my dreams and stuff, that if I set an intention before I go hand, even spend five to ten minutes meditating on 
feeling like I will remember, that really helps me to capture some things. And I, also, maybe for you, like the astral projection, having a notebook or some pen and paper near your bed could really help when you get back and just kind of jot things down immediately. So, Because when you go back and look at it, sometimes it's like, I had no freaking clue that, <laughs> that I don't remember that at all, but I wrote it, so I know that you know it helps. So, yeah. That's, That's great. great advice. Yes, thank you. Anyone else have a question? I do. Hello. Um, I remember we were talking last time. Uh, I saw an entity in my house that night. I was just wondering if it was you or who. Hmm. That information is not available at the moment. Doesn't pass through. Anything else? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. We can yes. hear you. Yeah. Yes. Um, are we still on board for a 2027, is it? Um, first contact? Does that seem to be the timeline at this point from your point of view? Ah. Oh. So, Mikey, ah, uh, that's it for, okay. <laughs> Two questions threw me out. Max, Max is back. I'm sorry. Yeah, this information is blocked. Mm. All right. Hello, everybody. I think no um, if you have any questions to me, I can answer, but um, I think I need to start wrapping up. Okay, Max. How is everything, everybody doing? Everybody is nice. Nice here. Let me see who is present. Claire, Dimitri, Frantisek, Jesse, Mark, Marco. I don't think I met Marco. Matt, Mikey, and Sean. I really, I really dug that, Max. I really liked it, and I just want to say thank you so much for doing it. Uh, it seems like You're welcome. You know, being I don't know how Chicago is treating you, but it seems like. Your move kind of has helped you really push yourself, and I think it's really inspirational because definitely some of us need a push also. <laughs> Myself mostly included. Oh. Hmm. I mm, partly agree, and partly I would say, mm, yeah, I wish... Uh, you know, I wish to be paid in cash. I will be much more inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Somehow they inspire us in a very economical way without, uh, you know, helping us materially. But yes, I, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, uh, in, 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 uh, I'm thankful. And I'm thankful for those who send donations and send the donations through PayPal to max at humancolony.org. Join our uh, humancolony.org. Join our Hukula community at, um, at Google+. And if you want to receive invitations to these gatherings by email, send my email to max at humancolony.org. Um, I have a couple more minutes if you want to discuss anything with me. You're welcome. Do you have something you want to share with your experience you have uh, this weekend? Mm. Oh, I had, oh, wonderful. I had a uh, couple days ago, I went through meetup.com. I went to a healing circle. They call it healing circle. It's not a circle. A healing, um, psychic healing gathering. It was two big rooms fill, filled with people, yeah. and the energy was absolutely great, and there was a flow of um, visitors, and there were nice, the, it was packed with visitors, packed with practitioners, Reiki massage, incredible massage practitioners. There was a nice, uh, it's called Vortex Healing. Mm. 
you do everything as you do in Reiki. You put the patient on the uh, massage bed, but you don't touch it to the patient at all. You just sit and meditate. So two people sit and meditate and do healing just like that by uh, conscious meditation and uh, or unconscious, whatever. Conscious intent and meditation. Yeah. So that so was interesting. How you feel? How you feel when the, when you're doing that? I wasn't doing that, but I watched it and it felt felt right. I also often do Reiki without you know moving hands, just by intention. So, and so when when I can't move move hands, when I cannot reach somebody or I'm tired or the situation is not right, I would send energy without moving my hands. So okay. they did that and that that felt right. Um, and you know, I just jumped in as a Reiki practitioner, and I had uh, three, three, three. I think it was three patients or four patients. Three, three, three patients, and I enjoyed doing that. That was great. Okay, how was uh, the energy at this place? The energy? Yes, when you, when you were was there. Oh, oh, everything was great. I was healed. I mean. Usually I feel feel sick one way or another, and after that I was so elevated. I also received healing, and I felt like for one day I felt completely like normal, which was so unusual for me. Like energized, normal, healthy, very unusual feeling. Okay. So so that was absolutely great. If you if you maybe any moment of the day you just close your eyes and think to this place is just. Feel, think, and feel this energy you have find at this place. A moment. What can, what, what could change in your day? Yes, I understand your question. Great. Yeah, thank you for the prompt. Yeah, that's. Uh, oh, my whole sort of reality shifted. It was shifted by that experience. So, so, and by the way, I think that was my, maybe one of the reasons why I felt so sick before that. So. I was sick. I was pushed to this healing session, and yeah, and um, and that well, kind of brought me to new understandings and new opportunities. I guess if if when when you're sick, if you you put a picture on this this thing and you ask the positive intention behind that, what is it? What could be uh, this intention? Uh, to be healed. Other, other thing? Something else? Um, to be in balance? What more? To ascend? Yield, balance, ascend. What mm -hmm. more? Oh, to change the world. Change the world. What more? Um, that's about it. And what change will come in your life when you heal, balance, change the world? I forget the other word. <laughs> mm. <sighs> Thank you for asking. I am not there yet. No, you can yes. keep in your mind and take the week to find the answer. Thank you. Good question. I just uh, I just wanted to say, Max, that it's really funny because like we were talking about money and and you know you always hear in the New Age community or especially in like metaphysical books that you've got to feel rich and you got to feel the money. But I've noticed that for me it's really hard to kind of get to that space. But what I have noticed is like after healing sessions, it's really kind of crazy because. When you're in that high state and then you kind of spend an hour or even a half an hour like focusing and feeling like you have money coming in towards you, I've noticed that for me at least, like that's the times often that like really random sources of money and uh, raises and things in my life have happened that have kind of accrued wealth. So I don't know if that's a good suggestion or anything, but um, I know that... <clears throat> the healing sessions can be used, at least for me, kind of as 
as like a stepping stone even to merge with financial issues. So just a thought. I don't know. Yes, I would agree. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, that is an idea of uh, doing Reiki on, uh, on your finances. You can do it in many ways, but uh, yes, meditating on that, yes. Or just doing it the <laughs> usual way. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, I will wrap up. I need to go. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you, and thank you. I guess I will. Does anyone have a blessing for the closing? Mm. Let's bring a dolphin energy. I just noticed the dolphin on my T-shirt, so let's bring a dolphin energy. Uh, Matrix Energetics founder Richard Barlett plays with energy dolphins, and they're pretty scary beings. They're playful, but they are also predators, and they bite quite tough. But they're kind to children, they're kind to humans, and they are very enlightened. So that combination of being tough and enlightened, being higher dimensional and lower dimensional. You know, the dolphins have split brain. Half of the brain is sleeping and half of the brain is awake. So they, all, they are always there and they are always here. They are always in four dimensions and they are always in third dimension. They are always in spiritual world and they are always physical. And that's the key. I wish that to you. Be very high spiritual and keep pay attention. Some of you focus, keep it on the physicality. Feel your body and feel their Spirit, the God inside you. I welcome God within you. Namaste. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>